Are you personally concerned about the former president's threats against you should he be reelected? Uh, of course. Uh, I think anyone who's on his enemies list should be concerned. Because, what, what scares you most? What concerns you most? Well, what concerns me the most is what the court just did was to basically tell Donald Trump, um, you can do anything through the Justice Department. You can do anything through the military. These are core responsibilities of the president of the United States. You will have unquestioned immunity for whatever you do. Was Congressman Adam Schiff yesterday on the disgraced ex-president's personal threats against him further emboldened now by the United States Supreme Court's immunity decision. It is part of a terrifying and growing trend, the mainstreaming of open calls for political violence under the rhetorical air cover provided by the disgraced ex-president. On Sunday, the Republican nominee for North Carolina's governor, Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson, in remarks given at a church, said this, quote, some folks need killing. Take a look. We now find ourselves struggling with people who have evil intents. You know, it was a time when we used to meet evil on the battlefield, and guess what we did to it? We killed it. Some liberal somewhere is going to say that sounds awful. Too bad. <laughs> Get mad at me if you want to. Some folks need killing. It's time for somebody to say it. Those comments come on the heels of sitting Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito, who was recorded in a conversation with a left wing activist who he thought was a political ally, talking about how difficult it is to live peacefully with people on the left, the liberals. Quote, there can be a way of working, a way of living together peacefully, but it's difficult, you know, because there are differences on fundamental things that really cannot be compromised, end quote. And as we just showed you earlier in the hour, the head of Project 2025, which laid out the agenda for Trump's second term, Kevin Roberts, confirming some of Congressman Schiff's worst fears about the Supreme Court's recent immunity ruling. Roberts saying the Supreme Court has unleashed a second American revolu revolution, which, quote, will remain bloodless if the left allows it to be. We're back with Ruth, David and Angelo. Um, Ruth, political violence and the fear of political violence coming and, 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 and endangering not just the person in the arena, but, but your family is a tool of the autocrat. It's the, it's the fundamental thing. And um, this is what got me uh, into following Trump in 2016. I saw that he was using his rallies uh, for a reason that goes back to fascism, that you need to change people's perception of violence. You need to, to get them to see violence as sometimes justified, sometimes necessary. And so Trump used his rallies from 2015 onwards, and this was the basis of my report for the January 6th committee, as radicalization vehicles. And he would say, in the old days, you could beat up people. Um, and then he's engaging much later in dehumanizing rhetoric. And he's created a climate, uh, of course, saying also, you know, he could stand on Fifth Avenue and shoot someone launching his campaign at Waco, Texas, where, you know, a pilgrimage site for extremists, going to a gun store and looking at a, a Glock with his name on it. Uh, you know, it's not subtle. And, and of course, praising uh, murderous dictators all over the world. So, so changing the perception of violence in Americans' minds, that violence becomes the way you solve differences. That's what some of these quotes were saying. You don't reason, you don't discuss, you kill. Um, you beat up, you jail, and then you torture. And this is the terrain of authoritarianism, and this is what uh, I'm, I'm most worried about. He has created a permission structure for you know, all kinds of people to air their most bloodthirsty uh, fantasies, and this is the way you do politics now for some of these people. Ruth, thank you for sticking around. Um, you two stayed longer than we had asked you to, and I know you have to go, but thank you very much um, for all of your thoughts and, and wisdom today. We're really grateful. Um, David Jolly, the truth about all of this is that it's already happened, right? We live in a post-January 6th world. We live in a post-Paul Pelosi attack world. We live in a post-normalization of political violence world. And you know what Donald Trump knows about all that? 
it is a big bleeping political loser. It's a big, ugly bruise on his shiny new, um, you know, thing he wants to project. I I'm so informed by uh, the new book, Apprentice in Wonderland, that Trump's just trying to get renewed for another season, that he is this effective sort of accidental autocrat because he is pathological narcissist. You know, he needs to be renewed. He needs the ratings. He needs to be elevated. It's a dangerous combination. But there's always been this sort of reptilian survival instinct that, that Trump reveals here and there. And you see it in the shaving off of the corners on the platform, where he knows that who he is and what he is is unelectable if the country stays focused on the choice. How do you make sure that happens? Yeah, so look, I agree with you. I think Donald Trump led primarily by his own narcissism, but secondly, the incentive structure. He created a following, and the following is demanding more and more of this drug of absolute power. And, I, and what worries me about what's different this go around and now eight to 10 years into this is the followers before were hard to identify. And then we've seen them grow in their in their public expression of using violence. January 6th being a perfect example, the Paul Pelosi attack you mentioned as well. And now we're seeing followers get elected or hold office or run, right? The, the North Carolina candidate for, uh, for governor, who does he believe should be killed? I'll give you another example. An open, request, uh, open records request in Florida just revealed that during some protests in the state of Florida, a staff member for, Joe B or for Ron DeSantis told state law enforcement, go arrest some people. And when they said, we can't, he said, just arrest a couple people for the governor. We'll get your back. Don't worry about it. Those types of actions now are a movement that Donald Trump created, and you're seeing it in Project 2025. Let's now use the authority of the state for this what started out as accidental authoritar authoritarianism led by narcissism is now doctrine in today's Republican Party. And I think that's the most dangerous part. And so you see Joe Biden, for instance, having to wrestle with running on a traditional Democratic platform while also meeting the moment of protecting American democracy against this type of movement. And what I worry most about, <laughs> though I guess it would be the dark lining on a bright cloud, is if indeed America steps up and defeats Trumpism in November. We know Donald Trump will not accept the results of that election. And we now know his followers will get his back in doing whatever it takes to overturn it. Many of those followers now occupying the offices of secretaries of state across the country, offices of governor across the state, state attorneys general, and other people with real power who effectuate this autocratic movement that Donald Trump has unleashed. You know, Angela, I've, I've said for a long time, you know, no one's coming to save us. And that's the good news. You know, the only people left with any, you know, Jack Smith had the ill fated intervention of the United States Supreme Court and, and a late start. Um, the efforts in New York look like they've been slowed. He was successfully held accountable for his crimes, but now sentencing is delayed. Uh, group that all they do is raise lots of money. He's got all these videos on social media, getting people to send him money so that he can sue anybody who g does anything for anybody black and say that, you know, he's like a white's rights activist. And that and that it's very lucrative. And yet they they when they find out how unpopular the ideas are to the general public outside their bubble, they run from it. Donald Trump is claiming he doesn't know about Project 2025. I want to put on the screen Agenda 47, which is the official platform of Donald Trump's campaign. It's exactly the same. Dismantle the federal government, dismantle the, the administrative state, reform the DOJ, overhaul the DOJ, abolish newly existing diversity, equity, inclusion, remove all diversity, diversity, equity, inclusion. Like it's literally the same thing, Maya, but he's trying to, he thinks that people are dumb enough to think if he just says he doesn't know what it is, they'll believe him. Well, you know, what's interesting to me about Donald Trump trying to distance himself from his own platform, because even when people didn't know what Project 2025 was, he was saying all these things out loud as yes. part of what he was running on. You know, and I just think we should remember, and it's really important to remember, this is the same Donald Trump who's now suggesting he wasn't necessarily anti-abortion when his entire platform, mm -hmm. this goes to Joe's point, but his entire platform was he was going to overturn Roe v. Wade and, in fact, followed the Federalist Society blueprint on judges. We know about half of his judges were Federalist Society. It was the same thing, including the Supreme Court justices that are ignoring decades of precedent to drive ideolo ideology, including presidential 
immunity. I mean, all of this is a playbook. It always has been for for some. And I just want to underscore one point that Joe made, because I do think it's a really important one. There was a time, you know, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 had 73 senators vote for it. There were Republicans voting for the Civil Rights Act of 1964. We struggled to get one vote for Voting Rights Act in, yeah. in 2021. There is something that has changed, and it is wrong for the country, and it demonstrates yeah. an ideology over just sensible policymaking. Yeah, I would say, Joy— uh, Let me I, give you—go ahead. No, go, go ahead. Well, no, I was going to say, I, 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 I totally agree with Maya about that. I would say this is a huge threat— not only to civil rights, but to everybody's uh, rights of all kinds, economic rights. You know, they want to yeah. seize uh, the power to control the budget and put it in the hands solely of the president, which would mean, uh, you know, just destroying uh, every program up to and including Social Security, Medicare, the Affordable Care Act. So everybody is endangered by this power grab. Uh, and, you know, there once was a, a type of conservatism that was, you know, it played an important part in American history and American uh, politics. It had a kind of guardrails role for our democracy. That's not what this is anymore. And I, I don't call them conservatives. I don't like to call them conservatives anymore because they, they've dishonored that term. Uh, indeed. And if Folks, we're not mincing words. And as I've said so many times before, MAGA is trying to hide their fascism and their violence with the Project 2025 denials and all of that, but they do not have the benefit of the doubt. When you or regular politicians, non-Republicans, say things like we have to fight for a better future or, you know, we have to take our opponents on or, you know, this is a battle for the future of the country, we're allowed to use metaphor. Conservatives in the United States are never allowed to use metaphor again. Call it unfair or biased, I don't give a damn. When J6 happened, when the trial by combat happened, when the march to the Capitol happened, they lost all right to metaphor. But they don't even need metaphor here. You literally have a Republican who is a big Trump guy. This is a Trump event. Because remember, the Republican Party is the Trump Party now. Every Republican speech is a Trump event, a Trump rally. Calling for, oh, just you, you disagree with somebody? Kill him. It's a sick party. 